Morning guys, today I am in Meridian, Mississippi, and I'm about to head further west. Uh, today's destination is Dallas, Texas. Being on the road is, is really hard. We yeah. we understand yeah. completely. Yeah. Um, and we did ten years of about forty weeks a year. Of, there so, was days that the suitcase would get unzipped, go in the washing machine, right back in the suitcase, and it was like, are we flying or driving this time? And it was intensity. That's kind of I feel like that's kind of where we're different. at right I mean, now. We're definitely at that intensity time it, right it, now. It, like, and it's fun. I mean, I, there's no question. The mm -hmm. things you oh. see, the people you meet, it's amazing mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. But the physical and mental toll on you mm -hmm. from doing it and not really getting good, relaxing downtime mm -hmm. is hard. Morning guys, today we are in Caprock Canyon State Park. This is probably one of the prettiest parks, well one of the prettiest places in Texas. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous out here. I will take you up and show you around. We're here to film some bison and we were actually met, uh, we, we met up with uh, Ron and Teresa Miskin from the Buffalo Bull Company out here as well as uh, some of the Texas Park Rangers. So. A lot of great content that we've been able to film. Uh, Ron and Teresa, they're, they're the ones who helped get this whole um, bison documentary project that we've been working on started. So uh, that was exciting to meet up with them. Sorry for the wind. It is brutally, it, the wind out here has just been brutal, but, um, which makes it a little difficult to film. But the scenery is absolutely amazing. There's a ton of bison that are just wandering through the park. Um, it, you know, if you're if you're hiking or whatever, you kind of have to be careful. But um, it is absolutely gorgeous out here in the desert. So um, enjoy some of this footage from Texas.
I started here in September of 2009, and uh, we have been working with the bison. The bison have been here in the park since 1996. So they, the, my predecessors have, have been working with the bison for a long time, uh, but I took over in 2009. The, the change here has been transformational. It's, it's been pretty amazing to see where this project has gone. When, when we first started with the bison in 96, there was about 32 animals total. And then from 2000, or 1996 to 2009, they were working on a lot of the issues in regards to the breeding program. And they got most of that worked out by the time that I, I arrived in 2009. And then from that point on, we started on the next phase, which was taking these animals that are a, a, a jewel that, that belong to the state of Texas and putting them out where the people of Texas can enjoy them. Now they have access to about 12,000 acres and are able to range anywhere the public goes, you know, through the campsites, on the trails, across the roads. You know, you, you have to stop away from across the road and that's, that's a pretty neat thing for sure. It's, it's not an experience that you find anywhere else in the state of Texas. Now granted, there's other national parks and state parks that do what we're doing, but not in Texas, where you have a public herd that is free-ranging inside an area where the public has access to. And it is something that is truly amazing and awe-inspiring that, that these people get to come visit this park and see these animals the way they react in the wild. It's not at a zoo where you go and see, you know, a nice little exhibit, which is great, but this is where you get to see these animals act like wild animals. And that is something that, that is, is different than most experiences, and it's something that, that I believe that people need to see and enjoy. You know, we, we have close calls where, where People are hiking on the trails and a bison will come out of the woods or the, the brush and, and they're right there together, you know. And it depends on how the person reacts and it depends on how the bison reacts, what's gonna happen. And 99.9999% of the time, it ends peacefully and they go their separate ways. We have had a few incidences where, where it hasn't and we deal with those, but you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something that, that we have to consider without a doubt. These animals are so ingrained in our history. I mean, if you think about the Wild West and the way things used to be two, three hundred years ago, it's hard to picture that environment without thundering herds of bison, millions of them. This country, and when I say this country, I mean from Mexico to Canada, the, the plains, the Great Plains, the breadbasket of our country, that, that ecosystem was managed, dominated, and, and created with bison. For, for millennia, they have been roaming up and down these, these prairies and these plains. And the way they would do that is in huge herds. And they would w come through an area and they would just ravage it. They would just destroy it. And then they would leave. And they wouldn't come back for a couple of years. So you'd have this intensive pressure on this land where these bison would come through and they would eat everything that was there. They would, you know, poop everything that they had been eating. So they're dropping seeds and fertilizing. Then they would come through and stomp it down and replant it basically. And then they would leave for a couple years. And that's how this grassland evolved. They are a part of our history. And, and you know, you, you got to know where you came from in order to know where you're going. And, and these bison represent that aspect not only the, the historical aspect of the United States, but these particular bison are representative of the actual bison that used to be in the Panhandle of Texas in the Southern Plains. These animals were captured here in the Panhandle of Texas in the 1870s by Charles and Marianne Goodnight. 
and he would capture these little calves in the wild. And those are the ancestors of these animals that we have here. As far as science goes, it makes him the last known example of the southern herd of bison. They are extremely important for bison conservation because of those genetics. They're extremely important for Texas conservation and the Southern Plains because of those genetics. And so, I mean, they're, they're, a, they're a national treasure, but absolutely a straight state treasure. Bison are survivors. These guys are survivors. They have survived our best attempt to get rid of them. And they're still here, you know? Now it's, it's taken our help to bring them back. And we will never get to the, the point where we have 30 to 60 million bison roaming the pr free prairie again. And we're not gonna depopulate the plains. So, I mean, that, that's behind us, but we have half a million or so bison in the world today and they're doing great. And, and there is a lot of people that want to see them excel. You hear it a lot. People will think, well, you're a conservation. What are you doing eating them? You know, but actually, about 90% of all bison alive in the world today are in private production. And you hear people talk about, well, the last wild bison, or those are domestic bison over here, and these are wild bison, and whatever. They're bison. I have never met a domestic bison. Yeah, we have to be careful, go, not go down the road of domestication, but it would take thousands and thousands of years to do that. If there's a bison alive today, it is helping conservation. And if there's an economic industry that helps keep bison alive, then it is helping conservation. So yes, eating a bison hamburger is gonna help conservation. It's gonna help further the species because you are helping to keep those animals alive. If there was no economy, let's just say tomorrow they listed bison as endangered. If they were listed as endangered tomorrow, that would take away the industry that allows us to raise bison for meat and to put bison in the grocery store. So like I said, 90% of the bison alive today are in those production hands. So you would go to roughly, from roughly 500,000 bison down to 50,000 bison overnight because now there's no reason for those other bison to be alive. And, and I'm sorry, but there has to be an economic benefit for us to keep bison. And so we need to eat them. We need to, we need to utilize them in every way we can. Every bison alive today is managed. The bison in Yellowstone are managed. The bison at Caprock are managed. We have to manage these bison. And part of that management is to make sure that we don't get too many of them that degrades our ecosystems, degrades our natural resources, but also it could cause diseases, both with the animals and with humans. You know, they're, they're, there's all kinds of side effects. So we have to do management and, you know, processing these animals for meat, hunting, these are all ways, these are all tools in management. You know, we, we can't just keep putting them places. You know, we have to, I mean, we run out of places to put them. We're at capacity here at Caprock, so we auction off some of our animals every year, you know, hoping to start some more herds elsewhere, but eventually when we do that, we will be at full capacity. We'll have to manage the numbers at that point. So it's something you have to include in your management. Come on, Dad. Come on.